Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bone Talks. Today, we'll be talking about a broken hand, also known as a metacarpal bone fracture. Before we get started, I just want to review our disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only, and watching is not a substitute for seeing a doctor. If you are concerned about a medical condition, call your doctor or call 911. We are not responsible for any delays or damages in care. Again, this is not medical advice, but an educational video. Okay, so what is a broken hand? To start, let's just review the anatomy of our hand. Here's a picture of your hand on the far left, and the rest of these pictures show the bones in our hand and fingers. The finger bones in purple are called phalanx bones. We have three in each finger, except for the thumb, which has two. The next picture shows the blue bones in our hand, which are metacarpal bones. There are five, and each corresponds to a finger. The first metacarpal bone is for the thumb, the second for the index finger, third for the middle finger, fourth for the ring finger, and fifth for the pinky. These, these bones meet up with finger bones to form the knuckles in your hand, which are joints that allow your fingers to move. Next are the orange bones, which are your wrist bones, also known as carpal bones, and we have eight, which form two rows in your wrist. And last are the green bones, which are your forearm bones, the radius and the ulna, which join up with the carpal bones to make part of your wrist joint. Now this talk is about a broken hand, and so what we're specifically talking about are metacarpal bones. Each of the metacarpal bones has four regions, the head, the neck, the shaft, and the base. Now any of the five metacarpal bones can break, and they can break in any of these regions. A break in the metacarpal neck is the most common, but a metacarpal shaft fracture is also pretty common. A metacarpal head fracture is less common, but with these, doctors worry about injury to the cartilage in our knuckles. A base fracture is also pretty uncommon, and with these, doctors worry about a joint dislocation in addition to a break. Now, a broken hand can occur for innumerable reasons. However, one of the most common is by punching something too hard, like a wall, or punching with poor form, like seen with this little out-of-shape boxer. This is how it got the name, a boxer's fracture. This little guy here has a swollen hand, and you can see on the far right that the fifth metacarpal has a crack. A boxer's fracture actually specifically refers to a fifth metacarpal neck fracture. Now, about 70% of broken hands occur in people 11 to 45 years old. So essentially, this is a young person's injury. And typically in guys with maybe a little too much testosterone or too much alcohol, because it's not uncommon for these to show up in the emergency room at 2 a.m. when the bars are emptying out. Now, let's see how a broken hand is diagnosed. Our guy comes into the emergency room because of the swelling and pain in his hand. A doctor is suspicious for a break and orders an x-ray. X-rays are the best way to diagnose this type of injury. And as you can see on the far right, the x-ray shows a crack, also known as a fracture, in the fifth metacarpal bone. It's also important for a doctor to examine the hand. In the first picture, in the hand of this boxer, you can see swelling, but doctors also look for cuts over the knuckle because they're concerned for what's called a fight bite, which can occur if the knuckle gets scraped against the other person's tooth. This injury has a high risk for infection and abscess. In this guy, there are no cuts and he was probably wearing boxing gloves. Next, doctors look for the position of the fingers as they flex forward to make a fist. See how the pinky curls under the ring finger in this middle picture? Now that's not normal and it indicates rotational malalignment likely due to a broken metacarpal. In a normal hand on the right, each of the fingers stay in their lane as they come towards the palm and there's no overlap. The overlap in the middle picture needs to be straightened out, otherwise the person won't have a normal grip. When doctors look at the x-rays, they don't just look to see if the bone is broken or not. When a metacarpal breaks, it usually bends forward also. Looking at the side view, you see a broken bone that has stayed in normal alignment. But the second side view picture shows a more common case where the bone is bending forward. The bent angle is the current position of the broken bone compared to its normal straight position. And so the difference between the bending and the straight represents the degree of malalignment. Now a little malalignment is usually okay. It doesn't affect healing or future function. But too much malalignment and the bone really needs to be straightened out to minimize the risk for future problems. 
can be a little complicated because each of the different fingers can tolerate a different degree of abnormal bending. And also the metacarpal shaft is a little more sensitive than the metacarpal neck to any malalignment. So just keeping things very brief, if we look at a metacarpal neck fracture, the index and middle finger must be very close to normal. Any bending beyond 20 degrees needs to be straightened out. The ring finger can tolerate a little more abnormal bending, about 30 or 40 degrees, and the pinky can tolerate the most abnormal bending, roughly 50 to 60 degrees. And the pinky can tolerate the most bending because it's also the most flexible, so it compensates for being a little out of position. Okay, so now that we understand a little better what a broken hand looks like and how it's diagnosed, it's time to ask the million dollar question, how do we treat it? Now some need surgery, some just need a cast, and the answer for looking at all of these hand fractures comes down to the stability of the broken bone. If the fracture is stable, then it can be splinted or put into a cast for two to three weeks. And those that are a little worse can get an extra two weeks inside of a cast, but overall, most people can return to activities within four to six weeks. The question really is, what's stable? Most doctors would say that a break is stable if there's a low risk for it bending further out of position, or if it has to get straightened out, it stays straight once it's inside of a splint. Most of these hand fractures are stable injuries, which is great because it means that most of these don't need surgery but sometimes surgery can help, and it's sometimes even necessary. And this is typically when the bone is unstable. No matter how many times you try to straighten the bone, as soon as you let go, it bends into malalignment. It's common when the bone is broken into many pieces, or if multiple metacarpal bones in a row are broken, or in cases where the bone punctures through the skin, then surgery is really needed. Now, surgery uses two metal pins, or a metal plate and screws to give stability. The pins will come out in three to four weeks, while the plate and screws typically stay in forever unless they cause a lot of pain and then they can be pulled out at a later date. Now the good news is that whether the injury is treated with a cast or with surgery, the expectation is that the bone will heal well and that near normal or completely normal function will be returned to the hand. The biggest concern for doctors is stiffness and some people might even report feeling a bump in the palm of their hand, which is that metacarpal head slightly bent forward. But again, overall, the expectation is that all of these will heal very well. Thank you for listening to another episode of Bone Talks. For more information, go to BoneTalks.com or email us with any questions at contact at BoneTalks.com. Thanks again for listening.